I'm scared, Professor Dumbledore. Everyone is scared of something. Ridiculous! Mute? You're up next. That's an unusual one. What Mr. Scamander fears above everything else is... About Theseus. We don't know uh, his Hogwarts house, uh, anything about his, uh, his wand. Could you tell us anything or what did uh, J.K. Rowling tell you about uh, Theseus before? Before? Well, you know what? It's the, the script is so in-depth. We were saying just now, mm. it's like a... It's like a it's almost like a book. It's a hybrid between a script and a book. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a ministry man. He's grown up through the establishment. He's risen through the ranks extremely quickly. And, um, and he's, he's the top. He's at the top. He's the head aura. I'll never forget, I don't know if you ever saw this, but I saw an early version of a script in which, um, in which the, young guy, they were, the young guys were at... at oh, the flashback. At, yeah, the flashback yeah, yeah, yeah. when they were at the, um, Hogwarts together. He came like flying past the window on a Quidditch yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on his broomstick, sorry, and he was clearly like a, a schoolboy sporting hero. Like a jock kind of thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cool kid in class. Yeah, yeah. Um, The antithesis of Newton. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was actually really upset that my flashbacks got cut out. <laughs> it wasn't even me. <laughs> um, no, there's, there's so much, and there's, you know, J.K. Rowling paints these, these, these complex characters, um, and the subtleties in them and the nuances are there to play and it's a joy uh, and then to play with Eddie mm. is, is amazing too. How about the Scamanders? Did they, do they have uh, well, they You're have about secrets? to find out. Yeah, you're about to find secrets. out. Do you know, I, I, je, the, we're given a certain amount of information and normally it's the information that we, you know, we dig into and we ask specifically of Joe. But there are so many things that we don't know. And there are things mm. like, there are little, like, I know that Newt's mum was bred hippogriffs and, and that's where his love from the creatures came from. But we don't necessarily yet know all of the intricacies of their backstory. I know in the future though, your grandson marries, marries Luna. Luna Lovegood. That's true. Yeah. And we also kind of know that, that uh, Newt and Tina end up living happily ever after in Dorset. Well, I say happily ever after. Dorset. I don't know. Yeah. Dorset. But, <laughs> but what's Dorset? One, I don't know because that's what it says. Oh, right. but, but like you have all these pegs, and then you just you try and piece together what you can. You weave it and out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we going uh, to see this like dark side man manipulated side yeah. of, of Dumbledore? It's, it's so uh, funny you say to that. To break that image of perfection. Well, I, I definitely think, and Jude Law talks a lot about mm. this, about Dumbledore's demons and that's mm. and and his damage. And you really, I think that is going to be investigated over the next few films. But what I love about Newton and Dumbledore's relationship, in comparison to Harry and Dumbledore's relationship, is that Newt is, you know, it's a master apprentice. But also Newt's now kind of. I'm not saying he's anywhere near Dumbledore's <laughs> level, but he sees Dumbledore. He he knows Dumbledore for who he is. So even in this film, when when Dumbledore is gently manipulating him or nudging him to go um, to go on this mission for him, Newt does it with his eyes open. Mm -hmm. He knows the he's manipulation, him, yeah. but he also knows that there is something, and I think Newt has this capacity to to see the good in people, and he knows that whatever the reasons, even though he's you know. Dumbledore's being wily and not giving him the reasons. He knows that it's for the good. Um, and so, but I think that relationship will remain complex and we'll see how yeah. it changes. I'm super excited to see, I mean, obviously we, we know the older Dumbledore. I'm super excited to see how that plays out. Yeah, yeah. and how Jude, you see flickers of it in his eyes mm -hmm. in this one. Well, this movie uh, connects a lot with the previous franchise with uh, new characters like Nagini, like, mm. Dumbledore. Mm. Some people think that uh, they are only for fan service and not a, an important part of the of the movie. I don't know uh, if you have something to tell them to. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Mm. I, for, for me, it, and the, our whole thing with joining this world is it's Joe's imagination. Like so, so um, my brother actually Charlie used to work for Pottermore, um, and. Before I had ever met J.K. Rowling, he said the extraordinary thing about Joe is you can ask her about any character within her world and say, what were they doing when they were like 12? And she will have, you know, this world is not fiction to her, it's, it's, it's in her imagination. 
And that has been the greatest gift for us mm. in these films, is getting to swim in that imagination. So all I would say to those people who are questioning or interrogating, Jo doesn't need to write these stories, she doesn't need, you know, she's, she's written the most extraordinary pantheon of books. Like, and she's so doing it because wait. she cares about the characters. Mm. And that, that's, I, I just say, have faith in her. Mm -hmm. Wizard's uh, history, it's parallel to Muggle's history, and uh, eventually we are going to be at World War II in this in this franchise. What do you think it's going to be uh, Grindelwald's part in this uh, crossing of two two stories? Is he going to be like the dictator, like mm. the, the Adolf Hitler of, of the Wizarding World, or is he going to be like his own kind of villain? Do you know, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Genuinely, no idea. That's interesting though, you just made me think that how, how much does he influence the real world? Yeah. The, the, the muggles. Uh, I'd, I'd um, love to see how the, the, the two worlds collapse yeah. in, in one big uh, yeah. world uh, war that... We have no idea, I mean the mm. scripts are locked down until mm. close to shooting, so we have no idea. But, uh, but, but at the same point, like what happened in history was real and this is fiction and yeah. I think there has to be a serious sensitivity with how that's handled. Yeah, of course, mm. yeah. I'd like to know, without giving away anything, but what did you think when you discovered the big twist? Uh, only ah. your, your emotion. There are so many big twists in this. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but no, 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 not knowing where the character's going. So you're waiting, they're like, we're gonna send you the script, we're gonna send, and then the script arrives. And you're almost nervous to read it because um, I know you've got so much anticipation. And, and I read through, and I read through, and I read through, and I read through, and I got to the end, and literally my jaw was on the ground. I sort of picked it up, took one breath, and then read it all again <laughs> to sort of see how it all fitted in. Um, it was pretty exhilarating, yeah. Since in this franchise, we have the whole world, not only Hogwarts, to travel, where would you like to take uh, oh. Theseus and Newt in future adventures? I'm, I'm. The, the, the rumor of Rio is, uh, yeah, is, is really appealing to me. I, yeah. I mean, that's Rio is one of my favorite cities. Joe has just tweeted that some of the next film will be set in Rio de Janeiro, and um, and we found out when the rest of the world found out. So yeah. we're quite excited <laughs> about that. The Scamander Brothers on Copacabana Beach, maybe that might be quite fun. <laughs> shot in Leesden. <laughs> yeah, shot in Watford. Well, just outside November, of November day. Yeah. Exactly. Freezing <laughs> November day. You just build Copacabana Beach, but that sounds quite attractive. Yeah. And one last question. Yesterday you were at the at the fun event mm. of the of the movie, and you mm. had your first contact with Spaniard fans. And I'd like to know how was it uh, because you've traveled a it's lot amazing. with these movies. So, but I think our uh, Potterheads yeah, are the most, are the most uh, intense. Do, the do, least. Do, uh, intense. I don't, do you know what? I would say they are up there with the most passionate mm. of fans because we went into the screening where these guys have been watching all of the Harry Potter films and First Fantastic Beasts for 24 hours, seemingly without any sleep. And I don't know how that's humanly possible, but they were still, when we walked, we surprised them and they were so, um, they were so like excited and, um, Kind of, I think, overwhelmed by the prospect of the the, the new film the, coming yeah. out, it, it blew our minds completely. Blew yeah. our minds. They're so loving, and uh, I'm not. I'm, they haven't seen me in a film yet, and they're so accepting <laughs> of me and loving and caring, and just give me a big warm hug. Yeah. I love them. You're too good, Newt. You never met a monster you couldn't love. Traitors! Mr. Scamander. Do you think Dumbledore will mourn for you?